What's the word, y'all? The Josh Giddy trade or the Alice Caruso trade um, happened about 24 hours ago, and I want to talk about it again because I, like I said at the end of the last video, I have gone through every single stage of grief, and the last stage is acceptance. So I want to, <laughs> I want to talk about why, you know, I don't, I don't like the trade now. I don't magically like the trade now, but. I hate it less today than I did yesterday. Let's talk about it. Again, starting off with OKC side, I've already told you how much you're going to love Alex Caruso, so on and so forth. One of the major identities for the OKC Thunder over the last year or so with, they, with them being the number one seed out west is them generating turnovers and turning that turnovers into buckets. Well, Alex Caruso is one of the best turnover guys, turnover creators in basketball. So much so, there were a few times throughout his tenure in Chicago where I'd be watching him play and I'll look at the box score and realize like, Alex Caruso got, only got one block, one steal. And then it was come out to be like, oh, it wasn't a steal from Alex Caruso. He just knocked the ball off the opposing team's body and it went out of bounds. That don't count as a steal. So he, again, just fits everything you want to do, whether he's starting or coming off the bench. He's a utility guy to the fullest degree. He's going to fit perfectly, especially if he's going to continue to shoot the way he did at the end or the last season here in Chicago. Um, and hopefully you can extend him. Some of the stuff I've read about it. Pretty interesting. People are paralleling, paralleling it to when Iggy ended up with OK with um with the Warriors and th where they were in their timeline and how Alex Caruso could be their Iggy. Obviously, Caruso's never been an All Star like Iggy was, but I I, I kind of I see what they saying, man. I see what they saying. Again, utility guy to the fullest degree can play so many different roles in the basketball court. Going to generate turnovers. Going to hit his open shots. Um, OKC also does a lot of guard guard screens. Alex Caruso at four guard is a great screener. Mark Dayton and company, they're going to do an amazing job maximizing Alex Caruso. And this might not be the end of y'all offseason. So, again, congratulations. Now, let's go to the part that I care about the most, the Chicago Bulls and all of this. So, yesterday, one of my major gripes with this trade was the fact that we did not get any draft capital. And that still remains one of the crazier things about this trade. Considering the OKC Thunder have 17 first-round picks over the next couple seasons, they don't have 17 roster spots to, to, to use for these people. So it just made sense in my mind then and even now that the Bulls should have acquired a first-round pick. And, and, the, and the, one of the reasons that, that hit me later after I, report, uh, I, I you know, did that first video was there a lot of different reports about Zach Levine? Apparently, there are up to 15 different trades on the table for Zach Levine. So it's almost inevitable that he will not be a bull next season, which hurts my heart. But again, I understand it, right? A lot of people assume that the Zach Levine trade, or at least over the last year or so, was going to be a salary dump. And when I hear the idea of a salary dump, I'm, I'm thinking about a player going to an opposing team and the team that is trading that player is attaching different assets in order for the opposing team to accept it, right? So a lot of people had drew up trades that was Zach Levine getting traded uh, alongside Alex Caruso to get off Zach Levine's money. And again, we don't really know what's going to happen over the next week or two or three, but if Zach Levine is going to get traded... In my mind, getting a first round pick in this trade with Alice Caruso will just make the Zach Levine trade easier, right? Do you remember, um, and this is a well-ran organization, so maybe I'm expecting too much about the Chicago Bulls. Do you remember when the Boston Celtics acquired Chris Asperzingas? And in that trade, they also acquired two first round picks. They got Chris Asperzingas and two firsts, right? Well, a couple days later, or a couple, I don't remember if it was a couple days, a couple weeks later, they used one of the two picks they got in that trade to go get Drew Holiday. So in my mind, if we're going to salary dump Zach Levine, which is yet to be seen, we don't know if that's what's going to really work out. If we acquire a first round pick in the Caruso trade, even if we're not using it for ourselves, because this Bulls team has not, this regime has not done a great job of drafting, let's be honest with each other. If we're not using the pick for ourselves, now the attached thing that we throw with Zach Levine is not something that we really care about because it was only in Chicago for a couple of days. You get what I'm saying? So if we're going to attach some assets to, to get rid of Zach Levine and it's our own draft capital, I'm going to be mind blown. That's all. I'm going to be mind blown. Hey, hey, uh, Sam Presti, just scratch our back one time. What, what, what incentive do you have to do that? Just scratch our back one time. You feel me? Especially after the press release said that Sam Preston and him had a, a conversation with Josh Giddy about him coming off the bench next season and he all but requested a trade. So who had the leverage in his conversations? I think that our front office, again, they do a very poor job of talent or, or asset management. They're also off with negotiations. Look at all of the contracts they've given out over the last couple of seasons. Look at all of the trades they've done over the last couple of seasons. A lot of the times, if you go back to look at them Bulls teams and then them, them, them moves, you walk out like, man, I think they overpaid. Um, uh, Vucevic's contract, three years, 60. 
I think you overpaid. Vucevic wasn't good last season. The Zach Levine contract, I think you overpaid. And it's just, I mean, they have a few. I'm not going to take away the Kobe White deal, which is one of the best contracts in basketball. Even the Ayo DeSumo deal, which is also a really good deal. But like the major ones. And I'm just waiting for the moment that we overpaid for DeMar DeRozan. But that just feels like, feels like the case, right? But again, I have not done a full 180. I don't all of a sudden, I woke up this morning liking the deal. But I, I am a little bit more open to it now than I was then. Again, strictly talking about the basketball portion of this trade. Because this is not a trade that the Bulls do. At least I don't think. This front office has surprised me before. I don't think this is a trade that the front office does with it being like, yep, that's our offseason. We're going to use the 11th overall pick and draft the guy, and that's the whole thing. DeMar DeRozan, you back on the team. This is not one of those type of trades, in my opinion. This is a trade that sets up another trade. And if that other trade is really going to give us the indication that we're going full-on rebuild, then the, the, the Josh Giddy acquisition is not a bad acquisition if you're saying that we are rebuilding. Now, if you're going to tell me that we have Josh Giddy on the court, who, let's be honest with each other, let's be honest with each other, Josh Giddy doesn't defend well, he doesn't shoot well, he doesn't finish well. I could go on. But if you're telling me we're acquiring Josh Giddy, but also bring it back DeMar DeRozan and bring it back maybe Patrick Williams or maybe letting Patrick Williams walk and bring it back Vucevic, it just doesn't fit on any level whatsoever. We're already a team that don't take a lot of jump shots. We're already a team with negative spacing where a lot of times we run lineups where when Zach Levine was injured, where Kobe White was the only real shooter on the court because Vucevic think he's a shooter, but he ain't really shot officially from three for the past couple seasons. So we're a team with negative spacing. We also have DeMar DeRozan, who's notoriously a mid-range killer. He's just not a three-point threat for him, a lot of people. And now we're bringing in Josh Giddy. No, that doesn't make sense to me. And there's no way these people that are running this front office think that these guys fit together. DeMar DeRozan and Josh Giddy should not play a single minute together because in my mind, they don't fit. And that just means that maybe DeMar DeRozan walks for nothing or maybe there's a side and trade. I don't really know, but they should not be on the same court together because it's a recipe for losses. You're telling me that we're going to lose? A bunch and, and Cooper Flag is in this draft. Cooper, you like deep dish pizza? <laughs> do you do you like deep dish pizza? Because the pick for 2025 from the Bulls, if I'm not mistaken, is top 10 protected. So we want to keep that pick. We would like to have a top pick. Um, it just it just bothers me that this is the route that they're trying to go for a rebuild and the Bulls have been in a perpetual rebuild over the last decade or so. I'm just, I just look at other teams in basketball and I'm looking at the good teams in basketball right now. The good teams in basketball right now. The Boston Celtics this morning had their parade or maybe it's still going on. I don't know. I haven't watched a single second of it. The way they built their team to be a championship contender, they traded them old dudes, finessed the general manager, got a bunch of draft capital, and that draft capital turned into be two of the best wing players in basketball. And they did a lot of stuff around that. But the, the beginning of their trades, the beginning of their rebuild was acquiring future first round picks. The OKC Thunder, they traded the, be the best players in their history, some of the best players in their history. Now they lost Kevin, Kevin Durant for sure. But like they traded away Russell Westbrook. They traded away Paul George. They got a, a clump of first round picks. And they also a part of that trade got a superstar in Shea Gibbs Alexander. But those first round picks helped you get Josh Giddy. It helped you get J-Dub. I think the Chet Holmgren pick, I don't remember if that was their own pick or I think that was their own pick, but J-Dub wasn't their own pick. That was a Clippers pick. And I'm pretty sure Josh Giddy. I could double check, but I think Josh Giddy wasn't originally an OKC pick. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong there. But just know that a lot of things that they've done so far to make them the one seed, again, these are the two one seeds in basketball this season, was through bottoming out, getting future draft capital, and maximizing that draft capital. Bulls haven't done it. Just waited a little bit too long. You probably could have got some first-round picks for DeMar DeRozan over the last couple of seasons. You probably could have got some first-round picks or a first-round pick in exchange for Alex Caruso, but regardless, regardless, regardless. Um, I think I think at the end of yesterday's video, I was mentioning how Kobe White just had the best year of his career as the primary ball handler slash point guard. I, I think that Kobe White would be able to still be as productive as he was last season if Josh Giddy is the guy running the show. This is a huge, huge bet on Josh Giddy, man, because he, again, I mentioned he can't shoot, he can't finish, he doesn't defend. He can't shoot, he doesn't finish, and he can't defend, right? So, in order to maximize Josh Giddy, because again, you traded away, you traded for a 21 year old that's about to hit restricted free agency. You don't do that with the idea of a one year rental. You're, you're trying to help build around the Josh Giddy type. Was that the right decision? Probably not. He's gonna need the ball in his hands a lot. And a number say last year, and the games where Josh Giddy had the ball as a primary ball handler, so that may be Shea Gibbs-Alexander 
um, being out completely or him just not playing a bunch of minutes, whether it be foul trouble, yada, yada, yada. Josh Giddy was able to get good counting stats, but ultimately none of it really equated to him being a super positive on the basketball floor, right? So we're, we're taking the ball away from Kobe White to let him play more of an off guard. He's 6'5". I guess he can do that. Um, and allowing Josh Giddy to be the playmaker slash lead guard. But we also don't have anything else on the team that could help maximize Josh Giddy. He was one of the most open players all season long. And with the way the Bulls spacing is, it's just going to be tougher for him to do anything. So my, my fingers are really crossed that this is the first trade or first move of many. Of course, there's been a lot of rumors about the Bulls trying to move up in the draft. Zach Levine is almost undoubtedly getting traded. So I think that the offseason for the Bulls is going to have to be one that you can't grade move by move, but you have to wait till it's over and say, okay, none of that none of that made sense. You got to wait till it, you got to wait to the end and I think to say none of that makes sense or whoa, are is AK and and Mark Eversley good now? Probably not. But you have to just you have to wait. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my acceptance stage in this whole uh, stages of grief. Um, and I've been watching a lot of Josh Giddy films in the last 24 hours. And uh, it's not like it's a new player to me. But I do want to remind you, every year ESPN puts together their 25 under 25 lists. Um, this was just at the beginning of this season, right? This is just at the beginning of this season. And a lot of things have changed because I think that when they drop the next one, Alperen Shingun is going to be way higher than 25. But I will remind you that just going into last season, Josh Giddy was considered the 18th best 25 under 25 player. So that's my like acceptance fate that maybe, maybe with him having the ball nearly full time, which again is crazy to uh, do that to a player that's not a good shooter, a good finisher, or or a good defender, that he can maximize this. Because again, they had him over Jalen Green, Walker Castle, Jalen Duran. They had him over Tyler Hero. They had him over Scoot Henderson. And I, like there's a lot of players. Um, and when the season starts, he will not be on the next 25 under 25 after that down season. But he is only 25 years or 21 years old. I, 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 again, my, my acceptance slash bargaining. Uh, only time will tell what type of player Josh Giddy will turn into. But if I if if I did not do a full 180 on the trade, I did like a 20 to a 25 percent turn to the like, OK, I, I guess. Um, and part of that might just be I've watched the exact the exact same roster for two years straight. Just the idea of having some fresh blood on the team might just make me be interested again only the basketball stuff all right um i know this is gonna get me to, to the end of existence uh but bulls fans man one thing about us we're gonna ride for the team and guess who's gonna be that season opener it's gonna be me it's gonna be me i won't have a josh giddy jersey on i'll tell you that much i will not have a josh giddy jersey but i'll be there watching